You're watching the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Thursday, January 29th, 2015, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here are tonight's top stories. Tonight, the White House refuses to call the Taliban a terrorist organization. Then, the future of artificial intelligence. And Mrs. Clinton's false pretenses for the Libya invasion. That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. She's got to get up there with her freaky constituents. What a cult of fruits. Well, much like the neocons used false pretenses to launch a war against Iraq, Hillary Clinton as Secretary of State also created false pretenses for the invasion of Libya. Now, the Washington Times is reporting the discovery of tapes that were recovered from Libya that reveal Clinton had developed tunnel vision and led the U.S. into an unnecessary war without adequately weighing the intelligence community's concerns. Clinton argued that the Gaddafi regime would engage in genocide and produce a humanitarian crisis in response to an Arab Spring uprising in Libya. There were reports of Libyan airplanes bombing demonstrators and bombing districts in Tripoli and the army killing thousands of people and so on. But in fact, the humanitarian crisis in Libya developed following the invasion, not before. And according to the United Nations, approximately 750,000 refugees were forced to leave the country after this instigated rebellion against Gaddafi, and at least 30,000 people were killed. These tapes were verified by the voices you'll hear, which is that of senior Democrat Dennis Kucinich and Gaddafi's son, Saif. What you think America's position is, because uh, I want to I want to make sure that, that uh, of what your understanding is. Uh, listen, the perception here that American uh, Americans are neutral. The Libyans they want the Americans to get involved because you ha until now you, do, you don't have a hidden agenda and you don't have your own people and g give me this or do this or do that. So we need your support and help and this for, and just for peace to support the Libyan people, not support the government or my father, but to support the Libyan people. People are dying every day because of NATO. Yesterday, they killed three civilians. Libya, of course, has the largest oil reserves in Africa, so the U.S. NATO objective was quite strategic, steal the nation's oil wealth under the guise of humanitarian intervention. And like I said, at least 30,000 people were killed in this manufactured war that is blood that is on the hands of Hillary, what difference does it make Clinton? And now these supposed rebels who, who were engaged in this manufactured rebellion were comprised primarily of al-Qaeda terrorists who were purposefully armed and supported by the CIA. You'll recall this headline, this is from April of last year, Citizens Committee on Benghazi claims that Benghazi attack could have been prevented if U.S. hadn't switched sides in the war on terror and they allowed $500 million of weapons to reach al-Qaeda militants. And that's what you heard on that tape, that they were being funneled um, you know, out of Benghazi. And of course, we're seeing the U.S. switching sides in the war on terror once again. They're now saying that the Taliban, they're not terrorists, they're armed insurgents. They're no longer a terrorist group. Now, of course, they were certainly terrorists when the United States government wanted to sign the Patriot Act and take away all of our rights after 9-11. And of course, that sounds very familiar because we're, we're still arming these rebels just in a different area. And now the U.S. is switching sides in the war on terror once again. Mr. Morrell did not share with the White House uh, the assessment by CIA agents on the ground inside Libya at the time of the attack that there had been no protest leading up to the attack. Why this is relevant is because the Obama administration, five days after the attack, pushed forward this narrative that in fact the attack had grown out of a spontaneous uh, protest that was in response to um, an anti-Islam video. So the White House is saying that the Taliban is no longer a terrorist group. They're an armed insurgency. How convenient the wording there. They were certainly terrorists when the United States government wanted to take away our rights after 9-11. And of course, the Taliban still engages in acts of terror. And of course, as I mentioned, they learned these tactics from the CIA. 
Now, InfoWars' Kurt Nimmo writes, the Afghan Mujahideen and elements that would later become both the Taliban and Al-Qaeda learned sabotage skills at Camp Perry, the CIA's spy training camp in Virginia. Others were given paramilitary training in the New York area and then sent to Afghanistan with U.S. assistance to join the CIA-supported forces of a drug-running warlord who was known for throwing acid at women who were dressed in Western clothing and for murdering a fellow student from a Maoist faction at Kabul University. Now, the program to train and fund murderous tribal cutthroats and, of course, defeat the Soviet Union in Afghanistan was called Operation Cyclone, and many candidates were recruited at the al Kifa Refugee Center in Brooklyn, and they were trained by Ali Mohammed, a member of the U.S.'s Army's elite Green Berets. So, of course, following the defeat of the Soviet Union, the U.S., Britain, and the Saudis, they used Pakistani intelligence to create the Taliban. You hear this again and again. We tell you this. It goes on. It's nothing new. And, of course, we're seeing the same uh, training and funding of the rebels in Syria so that they can, of course, create uh, civil unrest there and destabilize that region to take out Assad, which will clear the way for outright theft of that nation's oil wealth. But in order to you know, declare that the U.S. doesn't negotiate with terrorists, they just go ahead and change the definition of what a terrorist is when it is convenient for them. Now they are armed insurgents. But what else is always very convenient? How about George Soros's connections to all of these uprisings? Now, Soros, of course, runs a global empire of NGOs. They leverage human rights to cover up criminality and stir civil unrest all over the globe. Um, you know, we saw that, of course, in, in Ukraine, Eastern Europe, Egypt, Ferguson. The man is, is a locust. And he's also connected to this guy right here. A lot of very wealthy and powerful people are quite afraid right now. They see us on an unstable trajectory. They don't see our political institutions being what you might call representative, responsive, and pulling things together. Powerful people can escape the clutches of the government, meaning their company or they themselves don't have to bear the burden. They don't have to pay more taxes or whatever. But as the system doesn't have proper resources, as it doesn't represent people, things are getting more and more dangerous. That was economist Robert Johnson. He was speaking at the Davos World Economic Forum, and he was basically saying that the mega rich are really scared. And so they're purchasing land and airstrips in remote locations in order to hunker down during these coming social uprisings that are going to result uh, from income inequality. Now, his group, the Institute of New Economic Thinking, is an organization that is founded and bankrolled by none other than George Soros. The organization that's warning that the wealthy are buying secret hideaways in preparation for riots and civil unrest was founded by this billionaire elitist George Soros, who financially backs all of this civil up unrest all around the globe. It's the problem, reaction, solution. Now, the issue, of course, is how soon is this going to be happening? Why are the elite buying these secret hideaways? And of course, this is nothing new. The super rich have been busy securing property uh, in safe havens for at least the last five years in anticipation of the next financial collapse. We reported about Hollywood director James Cameron uh, moving his entire family to New Zealand and leaving America. The Bush family also purchased about 100,000 acres in Paraguay back as far as 2006. And, of course, there are several reasons why the rich are preparing to flee, but the main factor is the rise of income inequality, and that's what Robert Johnson was warning about. But this is a factor that Zbigniew Brzezinski blamed for the global political awakening. He says it poses a direct threat to the elite's bid to further centralize power. He said, for the first time in all of human history, mankind is politically awakened. And that's a total new reality. It has not been so for most of human history. And he admitted that a worldwide resistance movement that was in resistance to external control, driven by populist activism, is threatening to derail the move to, towards a new world order. And that this sort of persistent activism and uprising uh, has proven increasingly difficult to suppress. 
So of course we're seeing this happening all over the world and the rich, you know, buying up all this land doesn't signal retreat, but it does signal that they are definitely prepared for something. They're basically giving themselves an insurance policy of these secret hideaways for when it hits the fan. And of course, all of this is by design. And that's why those in the know can prepare. Now we've reported before on Operation Garden Plot and their main indicators for potential violence. Um, the main indicators being high unemployment, increased crime, protests arising from income inequality, uh, police brutality, lack of jobs, poor housing situations, and of course, declining rapport between local officials and minority groups. Now, if that does not sound like exactly what we've been going through, at least since this past summer, uh, nationally, these protests that stem from Ferguson, Missouri, I don't know what. Talk about declining rapport. This happened last night in St. Louis. So as you can see, Melee breaking out at a meeting that was there for the community to talk about forming a civilian-run police oversight board. They're talking about a bill to put this in place, and that fight broke out between Jeff Rorda, who is a manager of the St. Louis Police Union. First, he got into a shouting match with the meeting's chairman, and of course, then the Melee ensued. Uh, witnesses say a shoving match began after Rorda who, of course, rolls in wearing a I am Darren Wilson wristband, which was, of course, definitely not to ratchet up the tension. Uh, they say that he shoved a black woman in the aisle. She says that she was trying to leave at the exact same time as him. You can see on the video, she's kind of, and he shoves her out of the way. The lady ended up with a scratch on her forehead. So, of course, that constitutes as assault. Now, if he acts like that in a packed hall, at a, <laughs> at a meeting where they're talking about getting a civilian-run police oversight board, imagine how the cops under him or the cops that are you know part of his union act when no one is looking. Now, even though all of that took place, even though that lady got a bloody scratch on her head, no arrests were made. Meanwhile, a San Francisco deputy public defender was handcuffed and arrested for doing her job. She was trying to uh, protect her client from police questioning, and she was arrested at the Hall of Justice. She said, I was arrested for what we do as public defenders every day. I ask questions, I talk to my client, and explain to him his rights. At that point, I was told that I was interfering and taken into custody. They said she was um, you know, getting in the way of their investigation. Now, she was released about an hour later. You know, She was handcuffed and taken to the cell in the whole shebang. But she was released about an hour later because the officer was called away and he had to go. He was subpoenaed to testify in court. So, you know, they let her go. But here we're seeing that even these public defenders aren't above the law. I mean, I'm sure she could have gotten herself out of it eventually. But we're really seeing a, a collapse of rapport between local officials and the community that they are supposed to serve. People everywhere are becoming quite aware of the fact that absolute power is going to be abused absolutely. Now, uh, this is sure, certainly not going to be building any rapport with local officials and the community in New York. Today, uh, it was announced that in order to deal with pesky protesters in the future, the, uh, the city's police commissioner announced the creation of a new anti-terror strike force. They'll be equipped and trained in ways that uh, normal patrol officers are not. They'll be equipped with all the extra heavy protective gear, with the long rifles and machine guns that was unfortunately sometimes necessary in these instances. And instead have a cadre of 350 specifically trained officers, specifically equipped to perform that highly skilled uh, duty of protecting sites against terrorism. So terror attacks like in Mumbai and Paris and, oh, protests too, like the ones they just had in New York, which were largely peaceful protests. So I guess all of you people wanting to interrupt brunch better look out for this anti-terror strike force to be taking you out. Now, he also said that instead of only responding to these alleged threats, the strike force will be tasked with permanently patrolling the city, building relationships 
with the community in the process. <laughs> so this is going to be full on terror cops building a relationship in a community near you. What a joke. This country is screwed. But at least they're not in Mississippi because state lawmakers there are introducing a first of its kind bill that are going to allow police to, without a warrant, enter any home where they believe a pit bull or another dangerous dog might be present. So if you've got a dangerous dog, they can just come on in without a warrant. But additionally, under this House Bill 1261, police may kill the animals if two of the following three factors apply. The dogs are not under proper restraint when on their owner's premises, they aren't wearing vaccination tags on their necks, or they're still running around after, quote, attempts to peacefully capture the dog have been made and proven unsuccessful. And we've seen plenty of videos of this. The, a, a dog was shot here in Austin by a police officer. The dog was playing Frisbee with its owner and the, there, he wasn't on a leash, so the cop shot him. Now, if you don't know a cop is gonna bust through your door, you're probably not gonna have your dog on a leash or in a cage or something. So this is, this is insanity. Hopefully the people there are going to, you know, the voters are gonna obviously shut this down, but this is insane. So they're gonna have full on robocops patrolling cities in, in, in New York. They've got now the authority to come into homes in Mississippi without a warrant and kill your dog. So we've got the elites buying up their secret bunkers in far off places, you know, with their getaway helicopters. We can see the writing on the wall, right? Now we all know this is go where this is going. Now coming up, additionally a part of this tyranny, the mainstream media is now actively pushing for those who aren't vaccinated to be thrown in jail. The knowledge of the ancients, tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all new ancient defense herbal immunity blend crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. For a limited time, get 25% off on this introductory offer. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. Ancientdefense.com. Every year we make resolutions to lose weight and get in shape. And the truth is it's hard, even with diet and exercise, because of toxic food in our environment that is stressing our bodies more than ever before. Working with experts in nutrition and biochemistry, I found that super high quality nutraceuticals, in addition to my diet and exercise, were the answers that synergistically worked. I can see the drastic changes every day with the amount of weight I've lost, my increased stamina, and more of a twinkle in my eye. That's why we are now so excited to launch the InfoWars Life Resolution Pack, combining three essential formulations, oxygen-based cleanser oxy powder, the Secret 12 bioavailable vitamin B12, and your choice of super female or super male vitality. Now all available at a discounted price to you and your family to bring in the new year and make 2015 a true success. That's InfoWarsLife.com or 888-253-3139. 2015 is the year to do it, and it all starts at InfoWarsLife.com. Joe Biggs here with Infowars.com. Now I saw an article yesterday in USA Today that really pisses me off. That's about the only way I can put it. It was written by this guy named Alex Beersow. The title of this article, go ahead and get this, Jail Anti-Vax Parents. The idiocracy is out of control. Wow. And he rambles on about a bunch of uh, crazy stuff saying that the measles outbreak is because of people who don't get vaccinations and that it's only gonna get worse 
and that that's not enough. Parents who do not vaccinate their children should go to jail. Well, buddy, you should go get your vaccines. If they work, then you don't have anything to worry about. You know what? You seem to be a vaccine expert. You seem to know more than anyone else in this subject. So let me give you a few examples of why I don't personally take vaccinations. The entire time I was in the military, I was forced to take inoculations on a regular basis. Since I've gotten out of the military, I have stopped taking these vaccines and I have not been sick. But while I was in, was the sickest time I have ever gone through in my life. I was constantly getting sick. So many different medications being shoved in my body, injections in my arms. I was deadly sick all the time. So tell me where the vaccinations work there. How many more kids have to die from taking the flu shot? You are literally playing Russian roulette with children's lives here. And yet you're pushing for people to take it. You're saying, no, you're crazy. I'd like to see you meet some of these family members. I'd like to see you look these parents in the eye and tell them that they made the right choice to inject their child with that flu shot. Yeah, that seemed like a really good idea. Now they're having a funeral for their kid. Way to go, guy. It's people like you that are taking our liberties away, telling us what we can and cannot say, what kind of medications we can put into our body. For crying out loud, they're forcing a child to get chemotherapy who has come out and said clearly she doesn't want it. It's people like you who are going to destroy our nation, not the measles not people who don't take vaccinations. Sir, you have a lot of learning to do. It is my right to not put that poison in my body. I don't want to. And I think it's funny, you say anti-vaxxers often claim the right not to put poison in their children's bodies. And you go in and say that this is ludicrous. A mountain of data has demonstrated that vaccines are safe and effective. That's what I challenge you to bring, this mountain of data. Another thing that I thought was interesting that you said, Alex, is no person has a right to threaten the safety of uh, his community. So you're saying that when a child or a parent doesn't get their vaccination, they are a threat to the community. You said like drunken drivers, the unvaccinated pose an imminent danger to others. They pose a lethal threat to the most vulnerable. If you're getting vaccinations and your vaccinations work to protect you from getting these diseases, what do you have to worry about? He says anti-vaccine parents are turning their children into little walking time bombs. I mean, I, I just, I, I can't even read this. I mean, this article really infuriates me. So what I want you to do, answer your Twitter because I've been on there all day trying to get a hold of you. I challenge you, come out here, come on the show, be on the radio show, be on our nightly news. Bring this huge mountain of data that you claim to have. The vaccines are good. Also bring you a nice huge jug of fluoride water because you're out of your mind. I'm Joe Biggs with Infowars.com, and I'm tired of hearing people like you poison people's minds with all those lies. Introducing Secret 12, the new InfoWars Life Vitamin B12 formulation. Most forms of vitamin B12 are highly processed and synthetic and cannot be properly absorbed by the body. That's why for real results, so many are having to turn to painful B12 injections, which are known to have higher absorption rates. Now, InfoWarsLife.com is excited to announce that we can bring you our most bioactive, powerful form of B12 that has been developed with our exclusive perfected process. Secret 12 is a binary of nutramedical grade bioavailable coenzyme forms of B12, methylcobalamin, the same kind used in B12 injections, and adenosyl cobalamin. Secret 12 is simply taken by mouth, right on the tongue, and then swallowed. No needles, no injections. Don't take my word for it. Try it for yourself. Discover the secret. Secret 12. Secure your revolutionary Secret 12 formula right now at InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. 2015 is almost here, and with it comes those New Year's resolutions to finally transform your body the way you want it. 
There's a reason over 88% of New Year's resolutions fail. Make this year different by equipping yourself with Oxy Powder, the next level in cleansing the body naturally. Using Super Oxygenation, Oxy Powder, available through InfoWarsLife.com, gently cleanses the body while you sleep with easy capsules. Tens of thousands of individuals have used Oxy Powder to cleanse their bodies and aid in their transformations. Even InfoWars Nightly News Director Rob Dew has been using Oxy Powder with incredible success. Took it that first day, and then I took it for six more days after that. 12 pounds melted off in about a week, I'd say a week, seven days. 2015 can be different. Diet and exercise are important, but a lot of us have already tried that. Oxy Powder flushes it out. Secure your Oxy Powder at InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com or 888-253-3139. Bill Gates has added his voice to the long list of people who are expressing concern with the future dangers of artificial intelligence. During a Reddit Q&A, Gates was asked, how much of an existential threat do you think machine superintelligence will be? And he admitted, I am in the camp that is concerned about superintelligence. First, the machines will do a lot of jobs for us and, and not be superintelligent. That should be positive if we manage it well. A few decades after that, though, the intelligence is going to be strong enough to be a concern. Now, of course, he doesn't watch InfoWars, apparently, because we are actively concerned about the potential threat of super intelligence. And it's not just decades away, but of course, in the present day, today, 2015, the rise of smart homes and smart cars and all of these other forms of control Everyone's out here waiting and watching for the Terminator. All of these systems of control and smart control are being built up all around us. Now, I attended an artificial intelligence conference this week. There, I spoke with not only the author of artificial intelligence, but also Max Tegmark. He's a cosmologist and the co-founder of the Future of Life Institute, which was responsible for that open letter that all of these AI researchers and so on signed on to. Um, basically, a lot of people are saying, yes, so much good is going to come out of artificial intelligence, but we absolutely need to be concerned about technology that has the ability to take us all out if that's how it's programmed. This is the X109B14 modified transistorized totally automatic assembly machine. Within six months, our entire production facilities will be totally automated. Ladies and gentlemen, from now on, Whipple will operate from a brain center with machines such as this one. It used to be, you know, 300 years ago that machines during the Industrial Revolution re replaced blue-collar work, very easy-to-do jobs, and then those people got educated and got better paying jobs. Uh, today, instead, our machines are playing, replacing not the muscle work, but the brain work, right? And when you lose that kind of job, the only place you can go in the economy is usually downward in, in, in pay scale. We treat our, uh, our fellow humans as machines when we make them do jobs that a robot could do um, that simply require repeated mechanical motion, uh, very little scope for the exercise of judgment, of uh, very little scope for communication with other people, the things that actually make us human. People love to talk to her. Mm -hmm. In fact, we've done a study where we saw that people disclose more information and feel less judgment uh, you know, when they think it's a completely automatic system okay. versus having a person. I'm the third generation AX400 Android. I can look after your house, do the cooking, mind the kids. I organize your appointments. I speak 300 languages and I am entirely at your disposal as a sexual partner. The goal of RoboCup Soccer is that by 2050, they will be playing humans against robots, see who's actually better. Maybe it can eliminate poverty, help us cure all diseases and so on. Uh, but like any powerful technology, it's important to ask, what can we do now to make sure we get these benefits while avoiding pitfalls? I mean, Google is a search company. They're using AI all over the place. It's Siri on our phones, you know, that's all just AI in the background of there. Yeah. And so we're going to see more and more penetration of these sort of uses that really uh, help our lives and make our lives easier. Carebots, what I 
called CareBots that will do the dishes and keep track of grandma and let her have some control, even if she's got dementia, so that she can go on a walk and be steered back so she can decide what she wants for dinner. And does the AI community concern itself at all with the future of human employment? For instance, I heard uh, Dr. Russell kind of joke about, well, we'll just let the policymakers figure it out. So um, he's got a lot of faith, but this is something that's going to happen probably by 2045. A lot of the, you no, know, way sooner than that. it's a difficult problem. And I, I was at a meeting where there were five Nobel Prize winning economists um, and all they wanted to talk about was this question. Uh, what's the future of employment and the structure of the economy when most uh, of what we call work now is being done by robots? Um, and unfortunately, even though that was what they really cared about, they had no suggestions. You know, you go to Japan and there's no one taking your order. You go to a vending machine and you order it. And obviously the Japanese economy has dealt with that. Sapiens Plurum means the wisdom of many. And it is an organization designed to look out for the interests of humankind as technology develops. Because I agree with you that uh, technology is a very powerful force that humans have created, but will c humans continue to control it? The unfortunate thing is that we kind of get used to hell. <laughs> Uh, you know, there are lots of things about our current world that, that someone 500 years ago would think of as a vision of hell, but we're kind of used to them. And, uh, fighting to keep our... You know. I must work in a cubicle 12 hours a day. How dare you make my life easier with AI? Most researchers, most of my friends in the AI field used to think that, well, you know, it's not going to happen in my lifetime, so it's a waste of time to think about it now. But we're seeing in 2015 now that a lot of things are happening that people thought were going to take much longer. And uh, a lot of people are saying, well, you know, maybe these things are going to happen actually in our careers. So it's, now would be a great time to really start uh, looking into them. Could a weapons system blow up the world? Yeah, it could do it because a computer decides that's the right thing to do. But as far as I can tell, we are way more likely to have that happen when someone sits on something. Yeah. <laughs> like the red button. Personally speaking, I think that that the risk that we have from AI is not really of AI becoming autonomous and taking over the world. There's a much bigger risk that a person will use AI for bad purposes. Privacy is a big thing and thinking about what goals you give a program and what are the consequences of the goals, trying to get students to think into the future and to think more broadly than their individual program or robot, but what effect will that have on the people around, on the broader society? If that objective is not perfectly aligned with, with the values of, of us humans, um, then that creates the possibility for bad things to happen, for uh, that in some sense is the definition of conflict um, and getting into a conflict with systems that are more and more capable than we are doesn't sound like a good idea. And uh, you know with any technology when we entered fire we realized after a while it was also a good idea to invent the fire department and fire alarms and fire extinguishers. The more powerful the technology is the more urgent it is to actually also far ahead start thinking about how to get the best out of it. If you have autonomous weapons, you're going to have an arms race of autonomous weapons because uh, once you have autonomous attack weapons, then you need autonomous defense weapons because you know human reaction times are going to be too slow. Once you build little drones with a lot of AI ca capability, you know, it's, not like, it's very easy to make them. You just need a computer and some stuff you can buy on eBay and, and so on. And it'll be very difficult to keep them only in the right hands. You know, for example, clouds of miniaturized flying, flying robots against which it's impossible to defend. And, and you could imagine getting to a situation where you know, the life expectancy of a, a human soldier would be 10 seconds mm -hmm. on the battlefield. And, and life expectancy of a civilian if a government used those weapons against its own population would be, you know, two seconds. And the key question is, will there be other new conflicts when these drones form in, fall into the hands of ISIS and Boko Haram and so on? You know, the Kalashnikov is a good example of a piece of technology that everybody has now, right? Even the guys in Paris who did this horrible uh, massacre against Charlie Hebdo. If, the, if weaponized drones become the new Kalashnikovs, 
and everybody has them, I think that's really a net loss for humanity. I think we're going to see way more violence. So we have to be very careful, I think, to distinguish between fears about autonomous AI suddenly rising up, overcoming its programming, which is an unlikely scenario, and people deciding to use AI for purposes that um, are either unethical or um, basically do not value human life in the way that we should. And you could wipe out every inhabitant of a city uh, in a few minutes for a few million dollars. Mm -hmm. it, this is just not a direction that I think we should go. So I don't think robots are going to decide to destroy the world. I just want to make sure that my students don't program them to right. destroy the world <laughs> by accident. That's it for the show tonight. If you're watching us on YouTube, hit the subscribe button and become a subscriber to the Alex Jones channel. You'll surely be helping all of us here at InfoWars. And then if you go to prisonplanet.tv, you can sign up for a subscription there as well. It's only $29.95 a year. Um, that's about $2.50 a month. And you can share your username and password with up to 20 people at the same time. So go ahead and go get that today. It's got 18 years worth of content that you won't find on YouTube. That's it for the show tonight. We'll see you here tomorrow at 7 p.m. Central. City of Austin tap water versus filtered City of Austin tap water. I can like taste dirt in it. God knows what's in this. This has an aftertaste. Tastes like Austin water? Yeah, it does. Ugh. These people just sampled City of Austin tap water straight from the faucet. Next, we had them try a sample of tap water filtered through the ProPure G2.0 filtration system. High quality H2O. That one is better. Tastes like nothing. Yep, I know what good water tastes like. It's good water. Most tap water contains added substances like fluoride, chlorine, Monsanto's deadly pesticide, glyphosate, and many others. Studies prove that these substances are linked to an assortment of major health issues, including tooth decay, lowered IQ, and even cancer. It tastes like you're drinking out of the lake when you're drinking tap water. It has uh, that uh, processed flavor to it. The ProPure G2.0 filtration system removes these deadly substances and many more, leaving only fresh tasting, deliciously clean water. Okay, this is very tasty. It's good water. Refreshing. It's good. <laughs> Go to InfoWarsStore.com today. Use promo code WATER and save 10% off your ProPure purchase. Again, that's InfoWarsStore.com or call 1-888-253-3139. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. And your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.